Hello everyone. Um, today I am going to show you how to make some pictures of DNA. Uh, for example, the ones that you see over here in a thesis from my research group, um, illustrating how a minor groove binder binds and how intercalators bind. So, in order to uh, make these kinds of pictures, of course, you need some structural information uh, for these kinds of complexes. Now, this kind of structural information you can easily get from the protein database or from the nucleic acid database. So, we'll go to these websites um, and we'll go to the uh, protein database first. Uh, you've probably come across PDB codes and you can enter these, uh, but you can also search all kinds of protein structures over here. Now the protein database also contains lots of nucleic acid structures, but I prefer to actually find uh, structures of nucleic acids in the nucleic acids database. And the reason for that is that the nucleic acid database basically um, is focused on nucleic acids, which makes your searching a little bit easier. There are two ways of searching for nucleic acid structures. You can go th through uh, search DNA, uh, which we'll do um, in a minute, you can also go through an advanced search. And the advanced search really is very advanced. You can indicate exactly what kind of DNA you want, yes, no, whether you want a ligand bound, whether you want a crystal structure or an actual NMR structure, etc, etc, etc. However, if I go back home and instead I go for search DNA, um, I get a, a simpler setup uh, once it loads. And you can see over here that I now look at all the different uh, structures that have been deposited. That's well over 6,000, on the way to 7,000 now. Um, and here I am going to try to find a, a structure that is interesting to, uh, to show, for example, um, a groove binder. Now what you can see here is that I can already do a few different selections. So at the moment I look at all the different polymers, where the polymers are of course um, the, the DNA, the nucleic acid polymers. But I can also look, for example, at structures of DNA only. And you see that I have gone down um, a lot in uh, the number of results. Although I can also still see that there are still some binders here as well. But what we're interested in for this particular video are drug DNA complexes, the ones that you see over here. So we now have 420 results, and this now gives us uh, a number of results that we can actually start to really look at. Um, we can also look at structural features and uh, let's say that I am mainly interested in BDNA, not ADNA and ZDNA. So just go for BDNA, but I could have gone for quadruplexes as well. And I'm also going to say that I only want X-ray structures. So what you see now is that we've gone down to about 250 results and I'm going to try to find a nice looking structure um, in here. Now I can scroll through here and I see for example DAPI, well known DNA binder of course, um, and for every uh, structure if a reference is known that reference is, is given, over, uh, given as well. Lots of structures of DNA and uh, proteins as well. Um, we can keep scrolling, a few ruthenium complexes always very interesting as well. Um, we'll continue scrolling a little bit to have a rough idea of what kind of structures we can find. Now the structure that I had already identified that I wanted to uh, have a look at earlier is this spiridyl host uh, compound over here. Um, it hasn't been published yet, apparently, but the uh, diffraction data and the structure have already been, down, uh, been, been uploaded. So I go to the um, NDB code, uh, and I get lots of information about this sequence. I get the, uh, the DNA sequence, um, I get uh, the title of what is hopefully going to be the paper, I, uh, I presume, uh, something about the different optimization, and I get a first look at what this structure looks like. Now at this stage, um, I would almost be a little bit worried, because in this particular structure I don't really see the ligand. Uh, but we can go to more images. Um, again, actually, we don't see the ligand yet. Now, I happen to know that for this structure there is, in, there is actually a ligand present, so I'm going to ignore the slightly worrying feeling that we don't see the ligand over here. Now, what I want, what I set out when I started looking for these structures, is I wanted the structural information 
um, for this particular complex. And that kind of structural information is stored in so-called PDB files. Now you can see that I can download all kinds of uh, different the, the, the PDBs in all kinds of different ways. Um, but the easiest way of doing this is to go for the biological assembly coordinates in PDB format. I'm going to do this wrong to start with, just to show what happens. If I click on this link, what happens is this file is actually opened and I see all the coordinates of all the different atoms um, in the raw PDB format. Of course, I don't want to see this on screen. I want to download this so that I can visualize the PDB later on. So I'm going to say save link as, and I am going to save this on my hard disk, um, in, in this case, a folder called video demonstrations, because that's what I'm doing here. So you can also see that this file has the extension PDB, well, in this case PDB1, but it is clearly a PDB file. So now I have the structural information and I need to visualize it. Now, a piece of software that I like, that I particularly like, for visualization of um, biological structures is UCSF Chimera, uh, which you can download from this website over here. This is really very powerful software for representing uh, not only DNA, but also proteins, uh, for example. And we're going to have a look at this software now. So I'm going to open the software. This is uh, the software. Might as well make it full screen. And I'm now going to find the file that I have just downloaded. So I go to File, Open. Um, you find the folder where the file is. This is the file, and I'm going to say Open this file. So here I see an immediate representation of this DNA with, there it is, the binder. And I can zoom in and zoom out. In this case, of course, I want to zoom out. And what I have now is my DNA. Um, and it has already been, how to say this, cartoonized, where the different base pairs, because it has been recognized as DNA, the base pairs are actually shown as these planks, just to make this structure a little bit simpler. I can turn the, 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 the model around, and of course I see these little red dots over here. Um, I can select those, or I should be able to select those. Those are oxygen atoms of water molecules that happen to still be present in this particular crystal structure. Um, it's quite nice actually because you see that some of these are suspiciously close to um, some of the hydrogen or suspected hydrogen bond uh, donating and accepting site of this ligand. The other thing that we see over here is, and you can see it, it's a magnesium, um, it's a magnesium that was probably from the buffer because of its charge has been taken up in this crystal structure. Um, so this is the, the structure that we are, that we are after. Um, and we could almost put this in a, in a report or on a poster or in a thesis already, but there are a few things that we really need to do in order to make this picture um, more workable. Now in this case, we are dealing with um, a, a, a crystal structure, uh, but if you download an NMR structure, for example, what you will sometimes see is that you have more than one, or it seems as if you have more than one ligand bound to the DNA. Now the reason for that is that NMR structures typically contain not just one bound ligand, but actually um, a whole family of uh, where the ligand could bind, kind of like a, a thermal distribution. Now if that happens, um, you can go to Tools, General Controls, and to the Model Panel, um, and you will see all the different models listed over here. You can ungroup them, and then you can switch them on and off, as you wish. So that's really good about the model panel. You can actually uh, decide what is being shown and that is in particular important for um, NMR structures. So if I close this, um, there are a few other things that uh, are really important and uh, the other thing that I always end up doing is I want to set the background of this picture to white. And in order to do that I go to Tools, General Control and Command Line. Um, and I now need to enter the command to make the background color white. And that command is set bg underscore color with um, the American spelling and then white. And there you go, you have a white background. Now the reason that this is really important 
is that if you put this picture into your thesis, you really don't want to have to color in the background after you copy and paste it into your thesis. You want to have the background of your picture identical to the white background of your pages. Um, this is the same for PowerPoint presentations, for example. Uh, ideally, you adjust the color of your picture to the picture in your presentation right in UCSF Chimera already. Okay, so now I have this picture. I have the, the DNA nicely against a, a white background. I dragged it a little bit further to the, to the middle. And I can do a few more things with this with this structure. So, I can, well, as I said, I can turn it around so that I get the best possible look of how this molecule binds in a minor groove. Um, but I can also select the different residues in this structure over here. So, um, one of the things that I can do is, if I go to select residue, I can do all non-standards, or I can do 4L1. 4L1, um, I guess at this stage, is going to be the ligand. HOH are the water molecules. You can see that they've just been highlighted with a little bit of green around it. Um, and if I choose MG, that is going to select that magnesium over here. So, what I could now do is I could make these uh, particular atoms invisible, but what I am going to do instead is I'm going to go to the ligand, I'm going to select that, because that will also show what you can do once you have selected the ligand. So, if I now go to actions and I go to um, atoms and bonds, I can make this a ball and stick model. Um, I could also make this a sphere model where you can see beautifully how much of the space in the minor groove is actually filled by this particular mo uh, um, uh, molecule. Um, I can go back to... wait, where am I? Uh, yes, I can go back to uh, sticks uh, and I can then even show the surface of this molecule as a mesh. Uh, so that's what hasn't happened here, which hasn't happened here, sorry, actions, surface, oh yeah, first I have to say show, and actually I want that surface to be shown as a mesh. So you can now see what the surface of this molecule would look like, um, approximately. I'm going to hide this surface again. Also, because I can, I am going to select that magnesium and I am going to hide the magnesium. I am going to select those water molecules and I am going to hide those as well. So now I have only the DNA and my ligand. So, if I am happy with this depiction or maybe even this particular depiction. What I then do is I need to save this, I need to turn this into a picture and I do that by saving an image. So I do save image and I want this to go to video demonstrations oh, sorry, I want this to go to uh, video demonstrations, it has already done this now but I'm just going to call this image 2 um, you can change what type of file you make, uh, JPEG or TIFF um, are generally fine. And what you see over here is some information on how this image is going to be um, created. Now, this is actually perfectly fine, so I'm going to press save. And you see almost nothing, but if I now go to my data folder, then you will see that I now have these two pictures and if I double click this picture, I have a really quite nice picture of DNA, um, which I can copy and paste into all kinds of documents. So, this is the way to uh, create nice pictures for, um, uh, for PhD theses, uh, for reports, uh, for posters, etc. Um, it's really quite straightforward. You have to get the structural information uh, that you need and the structural information Typically, easiest thing to do is to get it from the nucleic acid database that you see over here. Um, you then use UCSF Chimera to um, open the PDB file, to turn it around, um, set the background to white, save the picture, um, and you're done. 
Hope you enjoyed this video and good luck with the creation of all of your pictures.